This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, in uh, this lecture, I'm going to uh, look at chapter 10 of the uh, free lecture notes of paper F9, uh, which is investment appraisal under uncertainty. Uh, there's not an awful lot in this chapter, but one bit in particular uh, is terribly important for the exam. Uh, and I'll highlight as we go through. But we did say in the earlier chapters that a big, big reservation in everything we do on discounted cash flow, and on any, uh, whichever way we make decisions, um, is that we're having to estimate the future returns, the future cash flows, and it's impossible to estimate precisely, obviously. And if our estimates are wrong, then potentially we've made the wrong decision. Uh, the, the, the cash flows are uncertain. You're never sure. You may think we'll get 10,000 next year, but clearly it might end up being more. It might end up being less. And it's how we can go about dealing with the uncertainty. We can't remove the uncertainty. But um, you need to be aware of four ways we might try and in some sort of way deal with it. Two of them involve calculations, two of them don't, or not at this stage. Anyway, the first one, and the most important one for the exam, is something called sensitivity analysis. And I can only really explain by... Uh, example. So look at example one. A diner has just set up a new company and estimates that the cost of capital is 15%. Now I warn you, there are a lot of 15s here, be careful. Her first project involves investing in 150,000 of equipment with a life of 15 years and a final scrap value of 15,000. Uh, the equipment will produce 15,000 units per annum, generating a contribution of 275 each. Now, you must be aware from papers F2 and F5 that the contribution is the revenue less any variable costs. And we estimate there'll be additional fixed costs of 15,000 a year, sorry. And part A, nothing to do with sensitivity, says on the basis of these figures, is the project worthwhile? Well, let's look at the MPV. What are the cash flows? Because uh, it's 15 years, there are annuities involved here. And so, let's set it up that way. The initial cost, an outflow of 150. Um, a final scrap value in 15 years' time, an inflow of 15,000, a contribution of 275 a unit for 15 years. And as I said, contribution is your revenue less your variable costs. Uh, so 15,000 a year at 275 a unit. Effectively our operating flow. Forty-one two fifty. Um, and finally, there'll be extra fixed costs. Remember, in earlier chapters, I've stressed this. If fixed costs are just being charged, if the, if the total fixed costs of the company aren't changing, this would be irrelevant. But here it specifically says they're additional, they're extra, they're incremental. So an outflow of 15,000 a year. Our cost of capital is 15%, so let's discount. 150 now is 150,000. The scrap, well, it's 15 years' time, so 50, the, the ordinary present value table, the discount factor for 15 years at 15% is 0.123. So 
So the present value, 1845. Uh, the contribution, well, it's an annuity. So the annuity tables, 15 years at 15%. The factor is 5.847. 41,250 times 5.847. Two four one one eight nine, and finally the fixed cost. Well, again, it's fifteen year annuity, so the factor five point eight four seven. The present value eighty seven seven zero five, and so the net present value. 1845 plus 241189 minus 87705 minus 150,000. 5329. It's positive, and therefore, on these figures, we will accept the project. However, as I said a few minutes ago, and as we chatted in an earlier chapter, we will accept, but the huge reservation is all those figures are estimates. We think it will last 15 years. We think the scrap value will be 50,000. We think the contribution will be 275 a unit, and so on. And if any of those estimates are wrong, the NPV will be different. If it's still positive, of course, uh, no problem. I'm still happy to accept. But if any of those estimates are wrong and the MPV ended up being negative, then of course we're making a bad decision. Well, what sensitivity does, it doesn't solve the problem, but as you'll see, it identifies how critical the individual figures are. The sensitivity We measure the percentage change in the flow that results in an MPV of zero. Now let me show you what I mean. Uh, uh, we're going to uh, you look at part B. Uh, part one says it wants the sensitivity of the initial investment. Now the initial investment is 150,000. Of course, that's the most likely thing to be actually certain of. But suppose we're not quite sure, because we haven't bought the machine yet. We think it's going to be cost us 150. And it might end up costing a bit more or a bit less. Well, assuming that for the minute that everything else is certain, we want to know by what percentage could that 150 change before the MPV drops to zero. Well, think about it. For the MPV to be zero, the MPV would have to fall by 5329. For it to fall by 5329, if the only thing changing is the cost, the cost would have to go up by 5329. If the cost went up by 5329, the NPV would be zero. And so we say the percentage change, 5329, on our estimate of 150,000, in percentage terms, it would have to change by 5.32. That's the sensitivity. It means if it changed by less than 3.55%, 
the project's still worth doing. But if it, if it was ever going to change by more than 3.55%, then the MPP would be negative. Strictly, we should show a direction. What I mean is the cost. I hope clearly we're only concerned if the cost increases, if the cost falls, the MPV becomes higher. And so, strictly, we should put a sign, the sensitivity is plus 3.55%. Now, that one was perhaps a bit too easy. Well, that's basically what we're doing. But now look at the second one. And then I can give you a rule. This time, assume that what we're unsure about is the sales volume. Remember, the question had told us we were going to sell the estimated 15,000 a year. And this time, assume we're certain of everything else. It's only that 15,000 we're unsure of. We need to know what percent can it change by? To end up with an MPV of zero. Well, although I'll give you a rule, just think it through. Just suppose, just suppose the answer was 10%. If the volume changed by 10%, surely the contribution per year would change by 10%. If this was 10% lower, that would be 10% lower as well. Uh, the discount factor, 15 years, no, no. if that was 10% lower, that would be 10% lower. So if the contribution were to, if, sorry, if the volume was to fall by 10%, the present value of it would fall by 10%, which would be 24, what was it? It would be 24,000. And the MPV, therefore, would fall by 24,000. Well, I don't want to fall at 24. To get to zero, it's to fall at 5329. And so we say, ah, all that would change is the present value that's affected, 241. That present value needs to fall by 5329. So the sensitivity of the sales volume We need a fall of 5329. The current present value affected by the volume is 241189. In percentage terms, 5329 divided by 241189. Uh, 2.21%. Now, I'm about to give you the rule, but it's awful to learn a rule without understanding. Think it through. If the volume fell by 2%, contribution per year would fall by 2 point whatever percent. And if the contribution per year fell by 2%, the present value would fall by 2%. And 2% of it, or 2.21, is 5329, the MPV had fall to zero. Again, sure direction. We're only concerned if the sales volume falls. If it goes up, the MPV gets higher. So strictly, there should be a minus sign. But what does it mean? We can afford our estimate to be wrong by up to 2.21%. Uh, if ever it fell by more than that, it's a bad project. And so before I do the others, in general terms, the sensitivity is simply the net present value divided by the present value of the flows affected. I can't write it a better way. For sales volume, the MPV was 5329. The flows affected were the total contribution. The present value was 241189. The, sen the sensitivity 2.21.
All right, now we should be able to do the others very quickly. What about the contribution per unit? Again, assume everything else now is, is certain. It's only the contribution per unit that we're concerned about. Well, if contribution per unit changes, total contribution changes. If total contribution changes, the present value of the contribution changes. And so again, it's the MPV of 5329 divided by the present value of the flow that's affected. It's as before, it's 241189. And so in fact, the sensitivity is the same as for the sales volume. Uh, again, we're worried if it falls. But if the contribution per unit fell by more than 2.21%, MPV will be negative. What about number four? Uh, the fixed costs per year. Well, it's the MPV 5329. What's the present value of the flows affected? Well, there's the fixed cost. The present value of them is 87,705. So 5329 divided by 80, I've forgotten what it was, 87,705. A sensitivity. Six point zero eight percent, and again, be careful about direction. Appreciate because these are costs. We've only got a problem if these increase. If fixed costs are lower, the MPV gets better and better. Virtually there. Uh, what about five? Uh, the scrap value. Again, the MPV five three two nine. The present value of the flows affected, well, there's your scrap. The present value is 1845. Uh, which arithmetically gives us a sensitivity of 288.8%. Uh, and you'll be negative for the word if scrap value falls. Now, don't leave silly answers. In that in any normal situation, surely the minimum scrap value would be zero. And even if the scrap value went down to zero, well, the present value of it would be down to zero, but the MPV would still be positive. And so, don't just leave 288, we would say it's not sensitive at all. You know, again, even if it fell to zero, uh, we're still positive. The only time when there just possibly could be a relevance uh, is if it could be the case that we might end up having to pay to scrap uh, the machine then the scrap value could be negative, and then uh, there might be a value special or so on uh, Finally, the only one that's different is the cost of capital. Now, we think the cost of capital is, what was it? 15%. Cost of capital is 15, and if everything else is certain, if all the cash flows are certain, what's going to happen? For the MPV to get lower, for an MPV of zero, the cost of capital will have to be higher. And you already know from uh, two or three chapters back that for an MPV of zero, by definition, it's the internal rate of return. And so, this is the one that's different. We'd have to calculate the internal rate of return. Uh, 
Now, I spent enough time in an earlier chapter calculating it. You'll remember two guesses and approximate. I am not going to go through calculating it here. There is an answer at the back, but I mean, do it yourself and then check the answer. But it's about 16%. Remember, the precise answer you get depends on what guesses you've used. Obviously, one we've got 15%, try another guess, perhaps try 20%. But depending on what your second guess is, the answer might be 16.2, 16.3, but it'll be about 16%. However, that's not the sensitivity, because remember, the sensitivity is the percentage change and so what's the change? The sensitivity of the cost of capital. We think it's 15%. How much change can we afford? Well, 16 minus 15, we can afford a change of 1%. So in percentage terms, I know it looks funny, but a change of 1% on 15 is a change of 6.67% and we're only worried if the cost of capital increases. All right, well there are the calculations and there's no way it has to all of them. This could be a small extra bit in a section C question or any one of those could be a, a two mark question in sections A or B. I also though, comment on the results and remember 50% of the exam, only 50% is calculations, the rest is effectively written. What's the relevance of everything we've done there? It doesn't remove the uncertainty. Clearly, we can't remove the uncertainty. You do your best estimates and we accept the estimates could be wrong. But where the benefit of sensitivity is, is we know which the critical ones are, where perhaps we should do more work. You know, the, the, the scrap value, too objective, I mean, ridiculous. All right, our estimate of scrap value may be wrong, but there's no point in wasting time trying to get it better. On the other hand, The sales volume and the contribution, both of them, would only need to change by 2%. And we've got a problem. You know, the lower the sensitivity, the more risky it is. And if the sensitivity is low, then you'll do one of two things in real life. You'll either spend a lot more work on those areas where the sensitivity is low, trying to get better and better estimates. Or, if the sensitivity was really low, you may say, well, we're not going to take the risk, we won't do the project. You know, I can't give you any limits, there are no limits, but if, I, if something had a sensitivity of 0.1%, then I think, oh, we just dare risk it. There's no way we can um, be so certain of our estimates that it couldn't change by 0.1%. And so, the lower the sensitivity, the more critical the factor is. The more worried we'd be about it, the more work we'd do trying to improve our estimates. So, I say, it doesn't cure uncertainty, but it does sort of put a measure on it for us. Uh, the downside of sensitivity is we can only look, or certainly in F9, we can only look at one factor at a time the problem is, what happens if two things change at once? You know, factors can affect each other. Uh, you know, changing the contribution might change the sales volume, but they're interrelated. Well, we're only ever expected to look at one factor at a time, uh, which does limit the usefulness. Okay, that's sensitivity.
Uh, one more um, for this lecture, because I will split into two. Over the page, you'll see mention of simulation. Now, you can't be asked to do simulation, but just be aware that it's an approach we could take. I said a minute ago that a problem we've got is that we kept saying with sensitivity, oh, how much, how much can this one change, assuming all the others don't change, whereas in fact everything might change. Well, basically what simulation involves is setting up all the possibilities, you know, the contribution. Let's see what would happen if contribution was $2 a unit, $2.50 a unit, $2.75, $3, and so on. Uh, what happens if the um, sales volume was, uh, we expect, what was it, 15,000? But what happens if it was 10,000, 15,000, 20,000? Set up all the different possibilities for all of the things that could change and work out all the different possible MPVs that could result. And there's no way you'd be asked to do that in the exam. Um, and we could do it with spreadsheets and things. But that's what simulation is putting in all the different possibilities, seeing what all the different MPVs would be, and looking to see, oh, in those combinations it's positive, in those it's negative, uh, and again, form a judgment on that basis. So I read what I've written, but as I say, that's not a calculation one. All right, I said I split the lecture into two, so the remaining two things in the chapter won't take long, but they'll be in the next lecture.